Good. So for um, all of us who are already in and who still are joining, I'd like to also recap a bit on the uh, journey we've covered so far at Swastishri. Um, not a very long one, but already quite promising one uh, at that. Uh, we began with our launch event on uh, the 17th of uh, October uh, earlier this year. Um, this launch event um, had, um, had itself graced uh, by Dr. Dipali uh, Telang. Uh, we continued from there on and uh, kick-started the, uh, the series, the webinar series with the first webinar that was held on the 7th of November. Uh, we had the topic uh, called Art and Culture. Uh, you know, and we had uh, the guests, uh, the, the expert guests speaking on it. Um, they were uh, Sri uh, Vasudevan and Dr. Rajeshri Ramesh. It was again a very interactive uh, session and we are so happy and glad to good enough present the second of the webinars in this series, Swastishri, what's great and what needs to change. And for today, uh, we have uh, the, the topic food and festivities. Before we uh, get on with the uh, topic, I'd like, I'd like to quickly say hi and welcome our guests and expert speakers on this uh, uh, top, on, on, the, on this topic. Ms. Shraddha Marathe, hello. And uh, Savita, um, I cannot see, ah yeah, now you, your video was just paused for a moment, but glad you're uh, you're back, Savita. And uh, yeah, the other uh, uh, the other uh, expert speaker today we have is Mrs. Savita Madhivanan. Thank you both for joining, and of course, yeah, thanks as well to the others who've already joined. So, like I said, today's topic is food and festivities. In my um, in my native language, in my mother tongue, uh, Kannada, it is said that uta ballavanige roga villa, matu ballavanige jagala villa. This simply means uh, that one who knows his food doesn't have any disease or doesn't know any disease, right? And one who knows how to speak, as in, you know, uh, literally how to, uh, to speak, you know, what to speak, when to speak, with who to speak, how, he doesn't have any fight. So this is what this means. And this is exactly what we do during our festivals as well, right? I mean, any festivity comes along with food. And once we all know what, why, how, and when to eat, I think we, you know, health, health, good health just follows. Perhaps also what's important here is when not to eat as well. You know, we, we cannot uh, constantly keep eating, 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 no. I think, yeah, what, why, how, and when to eat and not to eat is equally important. Um, and like we all already know, uh, every festivity has specific foods being served, you know, being eaten. And once we get together, we, we exchange pleasantries, have some nice time, speak to each other pleasantly and so on. So this, this old idiom that, you know, uh, that is in my mother tongue, and I'm pretty sure it's in a lot of languages, I think holds very good, very apt for this evening's topic that we have um, as the second webinar of the series Swastishri. With that prelude, then I also see a lot of more, lot more people joining. Thank you all so much. Briefly about the agenda for today, um, we'd have, of course, um, the uh, expert speakers talking. I'd, I'd introduce um, um, each one before they just begin. Uh, Mishraddha Marathe is going in first, and I'll first introduce, uh, give a brief introduction of her vast accomplishments. After we have um, uh, Shraddha uh, speaking, uh, I then introduce uh, the other expert speaker, Mrs. Savita Madhivanan. I'd give a brief about uh, you, Savita, and then you take over for the next, uh, for, for your uh, expert speech. At the end of the speeches by both, uh, both, by both these wonderful ladies, we'd have a combined Q&A session. 
wherein um, you could you could interact yourselves with the uh, speakers, ask your questions, uh, provide your feedback, and 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 so on. So we'd have a combined Q and A session. In addition, throughout the um, the session today. Uh, in case you have feedback in between or you have questions in between, please feel free to write them in in the uh, chat window of your Zoom uh, window, uh, in the chat of your Zoom windows that you see. Uh, while writing in, please be so kind to leave in uh, your name, uh, your city of residence, um, and, and, you know, and, and then just post in your messages there. Um, I, as the moderator, will you know, regularly go through the chat and ask the questions as and when appropriate to interrupt the ongoing session, All right? Um, at, uh, at the end of the Q&A session, um, I then um, uh, have some details shared about the upcoming uh, session, upcoming webinars in Swasti Sri. And uh, Mrs. Malti perhaps also could share a few more details if she likes about Bhogya Online as well, along with the uh, next session um, uh, in the Swasti Sri uh, post time. Post that, we then um, bid farewell temporarily and until we meet the next time when I do the vote of thanks. So this is the um, flow so far. And with that, we begin with the introduction that I have uh, to uh, Shraddha, uh, Ms. Shraddha Marate. Well, uh, she's a dietitian. Happy news. Uh, in, in, in short, I think that is the keyword. Uh, that's the catchword for most of us. She's a dietitian. Um, she is qualified um, uh, health sciences master. She's done her MSc in health sciences, uh, dietetics from a school of health sciences, Pune University. She's also done her postgraduate diploma in counseling from uh, Tata Institute of Social Sciences. She's a certified sports nutritionist from the K-11 Academy of Fitness, New Delhi. She currently works as consultant dietitian at MedFeme Women's Clinic. She's associated with Dean Dayal Research as associate project director in a research work related to portion culture at last since 2019. She is the founder member at Foodric web portal for the parents of two to 12 years old children since 2017. She has been a practicing dietitian since 2003, worked with hospitals, fitness industry at various levels. She's delivered talks on nutrition related topics at various national and international um, seminars. And this is in then short that we have about Ms. Shraddha Marate. That's, that's my honor to give that short introduction to the various accomplishments that you've done. And now I hand it over to you, Mrs. Marate, that you could take Thank us through you. the topic. Thank you so much. So I can share my screen. Sure, yes, yes. Um, then we'd have Malati making you the host. Uh, in case you still then are not able to share your screen. I think please, I can please. share it now. Perfect. Yeah. Is it visible? Uh, it just perhaps takes a moment more. It is. Yeah. We can see your screen now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, first of all, to uh, Malti ji and Sri Lakshmi ji for sweet introduction of me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I welcome you all. And our today's topic is food and festivity. So the tagline is what's great and what needs to change. I have stayed in uh, Germany for three years before. It was 10 years back from 2010 to 2013. So I have few experiences to share with you about the food being an Indian, being a foodie person, and of course, rooted to our traditions and culture. So here I start my today's talk. Food culture is basically nutrition culture and agriculture. So what we eat, it comes from agriculture and definitely the food we eat should be nutritious to fulfill our requirements also and our well-being also, our fitness, everything. Again, the food sensitive agriculture is also very important. So this is basically food security and nutrition security. 
so when we talk about food security this is we are getting ample amount of food to all our communities and nutrition security is basically the food which we are getting has a good quality quantity and nutritive value wise also it is a strong food which is required by a human being so this is our indian food culture we call it as portion sanskriti in our languages and basically it's a sanskar i say so in hinduism we follow sola sanskar 16 sanskaras so i feel that portion the nutrition is one of the sanskar which is from our birth till our death when diet is wrong medicine is of no use when diet is correct medicine of medicine is of no need so what exactly shri lakshmi said this is the quote i would like to think upon and share with you healthy eating habits and adequate activity is a healthy life so many of us we are staying abroad and we are disconnected we feel with our culture and tradition but it is very important to cook the food which we are eating from our birth wherever we live and of course thanks to our uh, multinational uh, projects and multinational uh, uh, the involvement of the governments where wherever we are on this earth we try to get our own food very handy and we live healthy life also the first topic of my uh, today's talk i would like to start my journey food journey you can say in germany so before reaching germany in 2010 my first to do list was availability of indian grocery stores nearby and also online so the search hunting started in my mind what would i get there how i had a small baby so what will i feed him or what will be the availability of our indian groceries over there and before just landing in germany i got to know about getgrocery.com and it was such a relief because we used to get all the uh, grocery thing online that to home delivered wherever we were in germany so that was a big relief for me searching for indian restaurants on google yes of course whenever we are in other land we search for our own uh, food and indian restaurants uh, nearby and talking to indian friends who are living already in germany understanding what to get best and from where like butter or ghee or grains vegetables fruits where it is available and how uh, economical it will be that also matters a lot for us any local supermarkets who are keeping uh, indian or asian food products that i had to search the local markets for seasonal local vegetables and fruits definitely when we are staying in india we have such a diverse uh, country and all the vegetables fruits seasonally it differs wherever in you, uh, your state or different different states we get different different variety of fruits and vegetables so similarly i wanted to know in germany what will i get which is local maybe it is coming from some other place but it is seasonal and traditional that also i looked for it then how to celebrate indian festivals with festive food this was also in my mind because we were going there for a long time and definitely being a in, being brought up in indian family we always uh enjoy the festivals and uh, celebrations in among our family members neighborhood relatives etc so these are the pointers these are to do list pointers in my mind did i achieve this yes i would like to share the achievements also eating delicious butter chicken with bhatura and roasted lid with papad in one of the indian restaurant was divine getting ready mid pani puri pad from haldi rams which satisfied my thirst of chat 
eating alfonso mangoes in the month of june and july which is summer there definitely and that was again a divine food for me i was associated with one international women's group there and we organized cooking indian lunch for our group and the menu was chapatis chaat uh, chana masala jeera rice dal fry then khira raita and gulab jamun so we all together cooked this and we enjoyed and really you can see one of the photographs there and we really enjoyed on that but it took almost 3 to 4 hours from morning to afternoon and all other country uh, women they were really asking me like do you cook so much every day <laughs> i was like yes since we have lot of uh, variety in our daily diet also we cook and when i learned german in that i got to know that germans make their breakfast so i was like why how and my teacher said yeah we make our breakfast i said no we cook our breakfast she said no no we make our breakfast i was like okay then she was she asked me i said like yeah we cook we cook poha we cook upma i explained everything and she said no no we just make our breakfast we don't cook anything in our breakfast all everything is ready and we just mix together and make the breakfast and eat that was amazing for me then again the indian snacks stall we put up in university open day and there we sold onion pakoras onion fritters which was really liked by all the people idli and chutney and gujiyas these were the few experiences i enjoyed there then another thing in supermarket local supermarket i got coriander leaves which were in pots that was again a uh, what do you say like the uh, addition in my kitchen to put garnish each and every dish of us which we prepare with cilantro and next step was rice flour i got a premium quality rice flour from a thai shop grocery shop from that i made modak you all must be knowing in ganesh chaturthi or ganpati festival we make uh, steamed modak which is a sweet delicacy of maharashtra so those modaks were the excellent modak still now i had prepared or i had cooked so these were the experience from my german stay next we will go to the um, another level of nutrition so this everything is coming from our upanishad so annam bahu purvit is a notion for us and we follow it on a daily basis now now i would like to explain you about the research project which we are doing it for past two two and a half years which is again a very interesting thing so this starts with the documenting the cultural aspect around our nutrition and uh, which comes through our rituals our traditions and we are documenting it in a form of portion culture atlas so throughout india we selected uh, 127 agroclimatic zones and we have collected uh, many uh, articles on the same or literally we went to the ground uh, level people and we got the folklore which is associated with our food so these uh, few things i would like to share with you all so this is basically our native food is very important if you go to uh, north south east west we have different season different uh, tradition different culture where the eating habits also changes and it is very important to be local seasonal and traditional to keep our health at the uh, good uh, pace so here are few uh, notions like always we say that uh, jaisa ho an waisa ho man so these few this the same sentence is in different languages we got to know one is in gujarati one is in kannada i'm sure shri lakshmi would uh, understand what this written as <laughs> so uh, one is in uh, manipuri and uh, one is in uh, up hindi language so basically our Hin indian food 
it is different in every each and every state which is traditional ethnic we have lot many signature dishes also particular to that uh, state we have different kinds of meals some are vegetarian some are non vegetarians lacto vegetarians some eats only grain based or lentil based foods spicy tangy the sweet bitter sour salty so all the uh, uh, elements of our food is very very uh, important in our own thali then different cooking practices are there like some foods are steamed some fried some roasted so when you go to uh, south india you have most of the foods are steamed when you go to north india you have most of the foods are fried which are important as season also when you go to north it is uh, harsh uh, winters are there so your body needs lot of fats and uh, important nutrients so uh, many uh, many people they eat fried foods when you go to south it is humid uh, temperature is there and therefore they the people eat steamed food more some places in between the roasted food is also there like during the crop new crop people uh, uh, they just roast the corn cob or other different uh, millet cob uh, cobs and eat them so these kind of different uh, variety is there in our country community meals festivals wedding rituals are full of different kind of uh, foods the food requirements according to the age groups the first when you are a pregnant woman lactating woman or infant or school going to uh, child all each and every person has a different requirement and accordingly we eat serving food also matters a lot eating food pra practices also differs use of specific cooking pots and pan or vessels again differ so usually mud pots iron copper brass different different area we use that then chutney pickle papad without this we cannot complete our thali these are the accompaniments so there also lot of variety is there these are uh, they are full of micronutrients so we add in our daily diet and all everything is rich in nutritional value and they have lot of benefit so this is our indian food food and festivals how they are uh, coupled with each other i would put few examples we have many festivals are related to agriculture few examples are like one makar sankranti makar sankranti is celebrated all over india just the name must be different in other uh, states like lori in punjab mahi bihu in assam pongal in tamil nadu uttarayan in gujarat but still the same khichdi festival is celebrated all over the india then vrat or fasting rituals also gives this important importance of food according to the season and that all of us we follow throughout the year our customs and traditions have specific foods to eat one example to put guguti is a festival which is celebrated in uttarakhand for children so there we have got folk song also for it and there is a folk story also behind it to understand to make understand uh, all the children what is the importance of that festival so basically in this sweets are made up of flower and jaggery uh, in different shapes and they are tied around child's neck as a fun activity so you can see uh, the photograph also there similarly in maharashtra bornan is celebrated it's a ritual for children below 5 years in this also the uh, puffed rice then beer then uh, all the uh, sugar cane pieces all these different different uh, uh, things are put together and though, uh, and basically on the lightest uh, uh, lightest weight to the uh, heavy weight uh, things are there which drop on the child's uh, head and gives the pressure point so this is the uh, thing behind this ritual also so the pressure points becomes uh, active and the brain development also happens well so this is behind our ritual folklore telling us different steps in the farming activities also so there are many songs we got to know which they really sing while doing the farming activities 
Sanskar Geet during Annaprashana, marriage rituals, Janmotsav, there are different, different songs which are uh, sung by our community people. Here I've given one example. So in Rajasthani language, there is a process, there is a uh, dance form where it is known as 13 talis. So each tali is basically for the uh, things we do in our kitchen activities. So like anach saaf karna, anach kutna, anach peesna. So this is, this, is, this is the dance form, which is a beautifully done in Rajasthan. One more ritual I would like to share with you. This is a song for Menak. So Menak is basically the occurrence of first menstruation in, in a girl. And this song gives entire uh, importance on the nutrition because this song gives you the uh, whatever the serve, uh, serving is there it, during this uh, uh, ritual in Maharashtrian families. So it is full of uh, balanced meal, basically all the cereals, all the pulses, milk and milk products, sweets, fruits, everything is coming in this one song. So here what we understand that all our ancestors, all our uh, mother and grand grandmother they are aware of the uh, importance of nutrition during this period. And so the song is made for that. One more uh, example is uh, this, this in South India. So you will see this baby shower song gives the importance like what all the uh, dishes are prepared. And you will understand appam and all this uh, rasam and uh, payasam. All these things are very important and nutritious for the uh, a girl which is pregnant, who is pregnant. One more baby shower song we got to know in Marathi. So in this, basically, we say each trimester, the requirement of the lady changes because, for the, because of the growing uh, infant or go, going, growing baby. So this song also gives what the, uh, usually in first three months, you feel nauseatic, you feel uh, not to eat anything, but the body's requirement is higher. And uh, the song says like you should eat amla, you should eat uh, nimbu, which is rich in vitamin C. So requirement of vitamin C, body says it, and this has come into uh, a song. One more song from the Uttar Pradesh. Here also, what the requirement of the lady, you can see in this song. Then coming to the community, the, we say the Indian uh, culture is, is one of the products which is shared and given to the uh, neighborhood when uh, it comes uh, from the bovine animals at the home. So this colostrum is basically the first form milk of the bovine animals or mammals or human being also. As everyone knows, it is very nutritious, highly uh, rich in immunoglobulins and antibodies, lactoferrin, which uh, helps in immunity booster. So these kind of things are given to different, uh, our neighborhood and relatives. So the nutrition should also go to their, each, uh, their home. And this tradition is very uh, common in all uh, states we have come across. And basically nowadays we get the colostrum tablets or colostrum in the form of capsules. But our old practices also tells us the importance of colostrum that they used to uh, preserve it in muslin cloth. So when the fresh uh, colostrum used to uh, come, they used to uh, dip the muslin cloth in that, sun dried it, and store it in the dabbas and for the future use. So these kind of things, practices were happening in our country and we should tell our next generations also about this, all practices. Here there is one song which is about, so we got many songs about vegetables also. So this song says about the uh, sweet uh, uh, potato. So it, it says like Bhindi ke sagai hui hai, shakar gandhi nachne ko aai hai. It is such a beautiful song and we all know the uh, sweet potato is also very good. So potato has come actually from the outside, but our sadhu sons, they have eaten this all roots and tubers for their health. 
So these kind of uh, folklores we have come across. One more uh, song gives importance about the chutney. We know in our thali we put only a teaspoon of chutney, but that quantity also give you many uh, required nutrients for the uh, bodily uh, bodily uh, uh, <clears throat> body's requirements and give us nutrition. So these kind of uh, uh, the songs also we have collected. Thank you so much. And I hope you all liked my uh, talk today. And uh, if anyone has if any questions, I'm there to. Uh, I've given my contact number also. And uh, you can contact me or email me with your comments or feedback. Or if you need any help, you're always welcome. Thank you so much. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, Radha. Thanks a lot. That was, that was very nice. I mean, always to listen. Uh, I should admit that my mouth started watering when I looked at the pictures of food. <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, that, that, that's quite tempting when we, you know, see food in any, either live or, you know, on TV or, yeah, in pictures as these. Thank you so much for sharing the knowledge. I especially like the part, uh, you know, where, where uh, food is so much related to the festival times and you know for specific festivals we eat specific food for specific occasions we so everything is so scientifically thought of and you know and uh, put in practice this is lovely very okay, nice in abroad so also it is very important i would like to say this you continue with your traditions and culture yes mm -hmm. the uh, season wise there may, may be some differences but the availability will be there if uh, you are you can grab the uh, resources then please continue with your traditions and give absolutely. it to your next generations also <laughs> absolutely that's that's a nice message thank you so much and uh, we are your participants uh, like uh, i already mentioned earlier uh, please um, write in your questions already if you have them in the chat window uh, we will have a combined q a session at the end like i said um and yeah or if you want to reserve your questions till the last q a session that's also fine you can yourself ask the speakers the questions directly before we move on to the next speaker uh, i'd i'd um yeah and of course you know uh, after i thank uh, uh, miss shradha marathi for the lovely speech i'd also like to mention um the association that Swasti Shri has with Swiss Hindu Association. We are uh, very honored about uh, this association with the SAT, Swiss Hindu Association. Thank you so much for coming forward. Uh, this, this means a lot of encouragement and motivation for the uh, good work that Swasti Shri is committed to. Thanks a lot. Also, I'd uh, like to thank on behalf of Swasti Shri and Bhogya Online to um, thank uh, Spicy Hof, uh, for coming forward uh, to um, uh, you know to offer sponsorship thanks a lot uh, spicy hof uh, gmbh is a one stop store uh, one stop store in uh, rheinach switzerland um, so this is an indian grocery shop uh, offering a one place availability for most of the indian groceries segmented into food and non food items including related services and um, uh, they also have partnered with a lot of recognized business partners. So thank you as well to Spicy Hof and to the SHA for your association uh, with Swastishri. Having said that, uh, we move on to the next expert um, speaker, Mrs. Savita Madhivanan, who is originally from Tamil Nadu, India, a new entrepreneur by profession. She is married and a mother uh, to a six-year-old daughter. Uh, that's uh, that's Mrs. Uh, Savita. Uh, also, I'd like to you know give a brief again of the uh, many accomplishments um, uh, that she has already um, uh, she's already um, uh, credited with. She's a certified um, holistic nutrition specialist with several years of passionate journey in nutrition counseling. Uh, she's qualified in clinical nutrition and dietetics. Uh, diabetes, diabetes educator, sports nutritionist, health and wellness advisor, nu nutraceutical supplement counselor are all these titles that you associate, uh, that you associate with uh, Savita. 
Uh, she's the founder and chief dietitian, uh, dietitian of uh, Nutresa Tori online digital platform in 2018 with an aim to spread awareness on nutritional values in our traditional cuisines, fruits and vegetables. Uh, she also is an online diet and nutrition consultant to NRI for weight loss and metabolic disorder programs. Um, she's a specialist in handling bone disorders and helps combat pain and inflammation in joints. Also a specialist in nutrition guidance for lifestyle diseases. Um, and, and like you know, her accomplishments already say, she, uh, her nutrition passion also continues in her conducting free healthcare webinars for Indians all around the world. And uh, she also makes project presentations and offers online tutoring for young nutritionists and also for young children. She, um, uh, she, she, she offers free sessions via inspiring young minds to incorporate moral values in kids. This is in um, a partnership uh, with another program that she does this. Uh, as, as a reward to all her uh, accomplishments so far. She's also uh, the rec recipient of International Achievers Award for 2021 for Outstanding Healthcare Performance in Nation Building by Indian Achievers Forum. She's been living in Germany since 2019. She learned the language and currently works as part of a clinical research program. Well, that was about uh, Savita Madhivanan and yeah, it's all about food and festivities uh, today. And Savita, over to you to continue with this topic. Thank you, Mrs. Shri Lakshmi, for your kind words. And uh, <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Malati, for this wonderful platform. And I feel really elated to share this platform with uh, Mrs. Shraddha Marti. So uh, I really, with that note of information, whatever we got from Mrs. Shraddha Marti, We'll go deep into that second part of the session that is what's great and what needs to change in with little more information. So let me share the screen. So is it visible? Yes, yeah. Okay. So uh, as uh, we already discussed that food and festivities, the term itself, it brings kind of a punch full of energy, right? So whenever we hear the term, it gives us a punch of energy and we start to think about the food, our favorite food and that saliva secretion will be there, the temptation will occur. So that's the deep connections, what we have with the food and the festives. And we're going to discuss a little more detail about what's great in our traditional cuisine and how we are following it in modern days and what needs to be changed. So with that concept of mindful eating, and we always have the infamous saying that you are what you eat, right? But we're going to discuss more detail about whether it is true, whether it will be applicable to us, are we in the right track or not? And we know, we're going to know about your gut friend. We all have a wonderful gut friend. That's what they're telling us the intuitions we usually believe. So all about the gut friend and whatever the traditional healthy alternatives we have in our food. Let's discuss each and every one. So we say that the food, especially in Indian culture, we have the rich tradition and we have the vibrant colors in all our food with the distinct flavors of spices and herbs into it. If you see different parts of India, we use these flavors with their unique twist in it. So that's the speciality of Indian food. So we do taste the same kind of uh, spices and the flavors, but whenever you taste these uh, different kinds of foods, that unique twist will be there. So that is the speciality. And this food, it's like an integral part of all our celebrations. So without this food, we cannot enjoy this, uh, any festives to the fullest. And it was just like a powerful combo. But regardless of culture and religion, the food is like an integral part for all the celebrations in all nations of the world because it gives us some identity to the group of people. So they'll say that Indian foods are usually uh, spicy. 
the indian foods are usually tasty and with more different spices so these are like giving us some kind of an identity to us and it is like a gesture of love that we share to the people whom we care uh, so it builds kind of a strong community bonds and apart from that festivities are always usually more family time so let's unravel like kind of a, a important piece of information that how we used to celebrate our festivities in olden days for, for example uh, in my childhood and i just remember that none of the festivities just went within the family there will be always a number of guests and neighbors will be coming and our friends visit and the people will be going in and out of the house so the house are like filled with people that's how i celebrated all my festivals so but have you if i just think about those festival times i just remember that uh, all the people those who are at the house none of them have spent uh, their time in front of any gadgets during that time so even during the festival if you see we will be following all our rituals no matter how many people are there at the house we will be following our rituals in the um, the stipulated time and we'll follow all the rules and everything and we'll offer food to our neighbors our friends and we'll take care of all our guests and we will not just um, save time by reducing any of the dishes we will be having n number of varieties and we'll serve all the varieties to all the people we'll take care that we'll be sure that everyone tastes all types of food that's the kind of festive we used to celebrate but what we need to think is that nowadays how are we celebrating these festivals whether we are in india or we are thousands of miles away from a uh, homeland how are we celebrating it is this the same way that we are celebrating the festivals each and every festivals so due to our modern lifestyle so whether we will be cutting down the items or whether we will be making it in a more convenient way that we can save time or because of the availability of the sources and everything we will bring in some changes into it or sometimes we used to buy the sweets alone outside so that's how we are making it and even if you having a get together along with your friends during your festival time uh, i've noticed that people children are, will uh, will be playing in the initial time like within one or one to two hours they get bored but in earlier days we used to whenever we have a friends or visitors or uh, relatives comes to a home with the children used to play play they will be like a endless play on that day they will get tired come home will have that festive snacks and savories again they'll go out and play but nowadays the children are like getting bored within one to two hours they'll get bored again they'll end up watching uh, video games or like watching cartoons together and even people when we are having a get together they end the day by watching a movie together so some way or the other we are like bound to gadgets so the problem what i'm trying to stress here is the problem is not with the cuisine or anything the problem is with the lifestyle they'll say that if we have a, a wholesome meal or for any festivities if we follow that wholesome meal that may uh, that may shoot up our blood sugar level the rice is not good for health these kinds of talks are going on but the problem is not with our traditional rice our poor rice our poor traditional foods have nothing wrong we have been giving our body that over dosage of that sugar over dosage of that uh, one particular nutrient even in the normal days that's why when you have the traditional meal on the festive days the body becomes slumpy so the problem is not with our traditional cuisine where the real problem lies we forget to have that mindful eating uh, there is a deep connection between the food with our body and mind uh, for example the food is like it's what providing uh, it's it's what feeding our thoughts whatever the thoughts we have based on that will be our actions whatever the actions that we tend to repeat that becomes our behavior and your behavior is what defines the character so in that case just see the connection that we have so we we are what we are based on the things that we put on the platter so there is a deep connection so on the normal days whatever you put on your platter that becomes very important so we usually have this over dosage of three particular substances in modern days that is sugar 
salt and fat whether that is a home based food or we are getting it from outside there is always a overdosage of these three nutrients so these three nutrients has to be moderated and over consumption of calories always and inadequate physical movement these three are the reasons why we are unable to enjoy the traditional cuisine so for that the traditional cuisine how to follow this traditional cuisines so i just want to reveal one great secret about this traditional cuisine um have you all um, remembered the way we uh, combine the food i don't know who is the great expert uh, expert behind this recipes and all i still wonder how they have come up with all these recipes because have you seen that rice with dal and ghee combination which is like a proper combination of your carbs protein and fat so which is like a wonderful combination they'll make and on top of it they'll have all the vegetables and everything which is a combination of micronutrients and based on that is what the nutrition have come up so they have made the recipes unknowingly they are not a, a great nutritionists there is no great dietitian in older days but still they have come up with a wonderful science based uh, recipes and combos that we still wonder about it and have you seen that always that samba will be accompanied with a, uh, a side dish called the varieties of vegetables whether it will be spicy or bland and whenever they have that spicy curry they always have the side dish of vegetable in combo with the dal which is like a combination of protein and micronutrients so since they are having a one particular spices on the higher end to balance that they'll have this uh, vegetable and uh, dal combination which is called as kootu in tamil so this is like a complete nutrients to our body this complex blend of nutrients are tough to achieve on the regular days but during the festival time if you see there will be n number of dishes even your vada papad pickle everything gives you some amount of micronutrients the reason why they are having this extensive course of meal on the festive time is that we will be constantly missing some kind of the nutrients on the normal days because of our routine so to balance all the losses we are having the meal which is concentratedly prepared during the festival time to balance all the losses so which is not a overdose of any nutrient during your festival time which is the right blend of nutrients your body needs it on a regular basis so that's how the festive has been designed the festival food has been designed in our tradition so these traditional cuisines shouldn't be shouldn't make you feel slump or dizzy or tired if it is so then the reason could be like because of the regular overdosage of sugar salt and fat and over consumption of calories that we have done in the normal days because of that overload our traditional cuisines could not do any wonders in our body that's the sign that after having the traditional cuisine we are feeling that tiredness and dizziness and you will feel very slumpy and bored so we need to avoid all that overdosage by following that three gunas of our food we all know that we have that sattvic rajasik and tamasik effect of the food which means like the sattvic foods are like more of vegetarian based light fat based and they will be cooked food included in the sattvic pattern but it should be like um, mostly like sauteed type of it steamed type of it not a fried one type so the characteristic of sattvic foods will exhibit in the manner of creating harmony positivity lightness and great deal of alertness whereas the rajasik food like they'll be a cooked food included in the rajasik method and here the foods are like um, the lean meats will be there kefein will be there and the other var varieties of foods which has been cooked in moderate amount of oil will be there whereas the tamasic food is like more of fast food based processed food based alcohol intake all that are tamasic food so this sattvic food is creating a kind of a balance how could uh, these sattvic foods alone create a kind of balance that's because it's overloaded with fiber rich nutrients like vegetables and fruits 
you cannot see any person complaining that i i had nearly five cups of vegetables today they cannot overboard with this particular nutrient because body will shut it off once it is full it will not allow you to intake more than what it requires that is the unique property of this sattvic foods so which is creating a kind of a balance which make you feel calm relax all the time and it will increase the lifespan of the individual so that is the power of this sattvic foods we need to create a balance we cannot follow the sattvic foods always because non vegetarians are also there and the people we are uh, going out and having the social meeting and we are following a modern lifestyle so in that case we need to create a balance that balance is what we call as satori so we need to bring that body and mind balance through the line of nutrition so for that the mindful eating of a traditional cuisine is really important as i told you that infamous saying you are what you eat but the real uh, click is you are how you eat and how much you eat that we need to include because of our lifestyle how you eat in the sense how the combination of food that you make it shouldn't be like more of carbs more of one particular nutrient and more of one particular spices in our diet the way we blend in all the nutrients how the way we are blending it that matters a lot and how much the portion size that we include is what describes who you are and how we are in the um, in our life so more the calorie food more the junk food more the processed food that we include which increases our calories which brings in lots of other problems like cardiovascular problem or sugar spike like diabetes and thyroid because the over consumption of the salt that creates a imbalance in the body that could be one of the root cause for thyroidism so arthritis so sleeping disorders depressions cancers and all these things will occur if you are unable to create a balance in our nutrients and similarly more the sattvic and the rajasic balancing food that we tend to follow that will create a great deal of uh, like self acceptance and positivity calmness and alertness and longer life span that we get from the balanced of sattvic and rajasic food so the proportion matters the blending matters and what you put on the platter that matters a lot not only the sources the quantity and the quality that also matters and uh, many people uh, many of my clients used to ask that i used to be very lean when i was in india but after i come here though i eat very little food i was unable to reduce the weight that i have gained i don't know why i am doing all my works here but still i am unable to reduce weight so this is the common problem that we all have the problem is not with the calorie that you take because of the alteration that we made in our gut which means in our intestine we have that microbes that microbiome we say which is like a combination of all the organisms that we have in our gut and we need to have this healthy microbes because which is very very crucial to digest all the fiber rich foods that we include all the fruits hard fruits the vegetable you take the people will say that usually you would have heard from dietitian that you need to include lots of vegetables and fruits the reason because it is giving you a benefit of fiber why do we require fiber this fiber is what helping you to remove the unnecessary fat from our body so if you want to remove that unnecessary fat this fiber has to work in our body if this fiber has to work you need to maintain the good microbiome in your gut so each and every person has their unique native strains of bacteria this microbiome depends on the type of the diet you have been following from the childhood you will be having a kinds of microbiota in your gut because of the environmental conditions and the medical conditions the quality and the quantity of the microbes may tend to vary sometimes the more pathogenic bacteria bad bacteria will tend to develop and the healthy bacterial growth will go down uh, this pathogenic bacteria is what responsible for all the bloating gas problems that we face regularly 
and I would give you one interesting study. This, will, this has happened with the US population, US immigrants. You can see the people, the original uh, South Asian people, they will have a different set of microbiome in their gut. Once they move away from their homeland, there is an alteration in their microbiome. And within six to nine months, uh, nine, nine months, it undergoes some changes. As years goes by, you can see that um, um, the people tend to gain more weight. They become susceptible to more disease that is um, that is prevalent in that particular region. And at the, in the second generation and all, the microbiota is completely varied. They don't have any native strains of their uh, microbiota. So this makes their body to the metabolism to uh, act in a different way. So what I'm trying to say is wherever you are, follow your traditional cuisines. And I, I don't know how many of you are still following our traditional breakfast, especially for your children, I would say, because I've seen uh, since my from my social contacts, I tend to know that their children are preferring only sandwiches nowadays. Their children are preferring only a packed cereals because they think that people will um, they think different when I take uh, when I pack this dosa zariklis in my box. All my friends are bringing in only sandwiches, so I need only sandwiches for their breakfast. So many people also have started following this westernized breakfast. But remember that is creating a changes in your native strains of microbiota, not only within you, within your in your children's also. So to maintain your native strains of bacteria, it is must that we follow the traditional cuisines to the extent, to the maximum, we need to follow the traditional cuisines. So you can enjoy like um, packed cereals or a healthy muesli varieties or oats, whatever, once in a week, but give more focus to your traditional cuisines. There is nothing wrong in our traditional breakfast like ikli or poha or um, varieties of chilla, talipit, and dosas and all such things are like wonderful house for this healthy bacteria. So make use of that too. Preferably give more focus to the traditional than the conventional type of foods that we are following, which is like very, very essential for this better health and longer lifespan. So in that case, if I follow the traditional cuisine, so can I have the rice in the lunch and whatever the tea dosas in the morning and in the night time, shall I stick only with the traditional cuisine? So that is the question I used to get immediately after I talk, talk more about uh, traditional cuisines. But the key is that portion control. As I told you, we should not over, go overboard with one particular nutrient. We need to create a balance that is calorie in whatever you eat that has to be equal to the output. We need to expend that energy. So, which is like very, very essential and always remember the phrase, few minutes on the lips forever or lifelong on the hips. It will create that fat accumulation in our abdomen area, which creates a kind of love handles around the hip. There will be a lots of fat accumulations. So, the combination of that healthy nutrients like protein, healthy fats and complex carbs, not only in your lunch, it should be there in each and every meal. The breakfast, lunch, and dinner should always have the combination of everything and include some kind of a physical activity on an everyday basis. They'll say that, have you seen our grandparents or great-grandparents, you would have heard or seen that they will be following a systematic pattern. No matter wherever we are, even if you're traveling, even if you're visiting your guest, they need their breakfast at around eight o'clock. And they wake up at around 4.30 or 5.30, no matter what the weather conditions is. So they'll have the lunch at 12 and they will wind up the dinner before 7.30. So even if you offer the dinner or any kind of foods after 7.30, they'll be neglecting to take it because they are following a systematic pattern and they'll have fixed their internal biological clock. That is very, very essential. That kind of a discipline that we need to bring in when we follow the diet pattern. So we should be like religious to our body first. We need to religiously follow a particular pattern. We consider your body's need always and choose traditional food choices wherever you go, even when you're traveling. For example, if I'm traveling, so I always make sure that my lunch has rice. 
I need rice, but I'll make sure I have a combination of vegetables in it. So we do have all the options. Where there is a will, we'll find a way. Likewise, we do have, whenever we are traveling, we have lots of Thai food, Vietnamese food, which has more of vegetable serving than the rice serving. So follow that pattern, follow the traditional choices and stay hydrated always. They'll say that, some people will say that you need to include two to three liters of water. So there is no defined terms in it, but minimum two liter of water we need to consume, all the individual, because our body is 70 percentage of water. To balance all the compartments, we need to provide minimum of two liters. And based on the environmental conditions that we live in, the activity we do, and um, your temperature of the body, the temperature of the characteristic of the food that we include, our water um, recommendations may vary and needs may vary. But minimum two liters of water is essential. And sensible eating, mindful eating, so I would like to tell you a, a small uh, interesting piece of information, which is like um, we, there is a um, kind of a island in Japan. This piece of information you can find in the book called Ikigai. So the Okinawa is a place, it's a group of island in that which is there in Japan. And in that Okinawa, there is a small town called Ogini. There, they'll tend to see that nearly 80% of the populations are more than 100 years old. So they were wondering what could be the secret? What could be the secret of their diet? So they asked, they interviewed few persons and they got to know that they are feeling that if you're getting up in the morning, which means you have, you still have some purpose in your life. That's why we are getting up every morning. So the, their ultimate goal is to find the purpose and fulfill it. That is their ultimate purpose. So they all work in, uh, in order to find their purpose and fulfilling it. And they have asked what, what are the other secrets between like n number of people. They all claim that the happiness lies in the way that you keep your mind active. The keep your mind occupied always, occupied in a sense, in a productive way. That is another key that they follow. And the most common practice what they have followed is, if they feel 80% full, when they eat breakfast, lunch or dinner, if they feel 80% full, they'll stop it. They will not go for a, another serving of it. So these kind of sense, even we would have felt when we have the regular food, but we may not pay attention to the sense and we go for an extra serving. But pay attention to the sense. When you feel that your 80% is full, in that case, stop having it. Don't go for a next service. So that is like very, very essential. Don't go for a sumptuous meal to make yourself um, unable to move or unable to think or feeling dizzy. Always stop it at the point where you are 80% full. This policy applies even when you are following a traditional cuisine. And as I told you, we always have an healthy alternative option in our traditional cuisine. So these piece of information, you can find it with the recording, but I would like to give you a few um, nuggets alone. For example, the oat cereal, whatever you eat, they'll say that oats are good for uh, fat reduction. Yes, of course but the same kind of powerful pact of nutrients you can find in our red pokha too. And the muesli packed cereal, instead of it, you can try our health mix porridges, our ragi malt, which is a wonderful combination of calcium and iron. We Indians have an abundant amount of sun exposure, but still we are the one who are having an extreme vitamin D deficient, deficiency. Even after people coming here to colder countries, they'll go for a vitamin D supplements um, now and then. So we don't need any such kind of a supplements provided if you stick with a regular native food of ragi on a regular basis. Twice or thrice in a week, try to go for this ragi-based food varieties, which is like a wonderful combination of micronutrients. And instead of the dips and sauces, try to use our chutneys. So eat at least for your children, try to cut down the sauces and mayo, which is very, very essential to the people, who, those who are in Germany or like in other parts of the world. I would 
greatly insist on preventing the use of that ready-made sauces. Introduce them to our chutneys, whatever the chutneys like peanut chutneys, coconut, mint, and other forms of vegetable chutneys, give them as a dip. Whatever you practice is what our children are going to follow. So make sure you inculcate this habit in the regular diet too. And the donuts or any kind of a sugar, sugar or brown sugar, whatever the type of sugar is going to give you the same amount of calories. But the only thing is the portion control. So go for different other natural varieties of sugar in the form of a jaggery or cocoa sugar that we have, palm sugar we have, that we can include. And instead of the normal powdered salt, we can go for Himalayan salt or rock salt that is available even in Germany. And ice creams, you can try out with your coconut, fresh coconut, whatever the coconut we get. In India, you can make use of the coconut flesh and create your own pudding and introduce to your kids. So try to include, especially those who are away from their homeland, try to at least introduce your native foods in an innovative manner to the kids. And or in general, the traditional cuisine, the portion key and all such, we have certain ground rules that needs to be followed. This, this is how the platter should be, our platter should be. For example, if you see, half of the portions are filled with vegetables. So only a one handful of rice is what our gut needs, our stomach needs. So whatever the cereal could be, whether it is a wheat or like uh, pastas, whole wheat pastas or whole wheat grains, millets, whatever it is, we require only one handful of it. And one portion size of protein should be there, whether it is an egg or like beans, legumes, the channa, whatever we eat or chicken, mutton, one serving of that um, protein. And these fermented foods like curd or buttermilk, it's like a standard so don't connect this um, with your weather conditions. They say that if it is cold, if I eat curd and that will increase the, the cold or cough, nothing like that. This is what is feeding our gut bacteria. If you want to have your native strains of bacteria, try to include this fermented foods every day in your meal. So one handful of rice, protein in every meal and healthy fats like vegetable oils and the omega-3 oils and all the nuts, seeds that we have like chia seeds, uh, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds, all that please include in your diet at least one tablespoon every day. And colored wheat, we have five different colors of fruits and vegetables, but make a list, maybe like you can just do a self-check you can uh, write this five colored fruits and just uh, correlate with your monthly diet plan. Like how, ma how many colors of fruits and vegetables that you are including it in a particular month. Then we will get to know that whether you are in the right track or not. Just to see yourself where you're standing, try to include that five different color of vegetables and always follow a checklist. And as I told you, water is like basis for our body drink minimum two to three liters of water, minimum, minimum two liters, which is like a standard and live a purposeful life. Whatever is your purpose, try to search and fulfill it. And the Surya Namaskaram here, this, uh, um, this depicts the Surya Namaskaram procedure. So whether it is snowy or rainy, uh, the people say that usually I'll do 10,000 steps but because of this uh, climatic conditions, I, I would not be able to do that. I would not be able to achieve my goal. So in that case, I would suggest the Surya Namaskaram, you can do it for 20 times or 40 times according to your health, um, your capacity, but do it on a regular basis. It will take care, it will work wonders, even if it's for a fat reduction, even if it is for a stress management, and even if it is for gaining stamina and strength, this Surya Namaskaram will do wonders. So there, there is no more excuses you need. Keep following these kind of a nuggets to see a great changes in your body. Be positive and always live a purposeful life with this balance of nutrients to create a satori in your body. So this is with this piece of information, I just wrap up my session. I hope you get a kind of an overview about, about the festivities, the importance of traditional cuisine and what the secret behind a traditional cuisine and everything. And in case of any doubt, you can reach me for 
any diet guidance. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks a lot. That was um, that was so comprehensive, and thank you so much, Savita. was was very very informative. So, we've we've got so much information from both uh, Shraddha and Savita today. All we need to do is yeah, gather all of it, not forget <laughs> any of it, and try to implement as much as um, possible. Also, while both of you were you know talking, uh, what I remembered was a few practices that, of course, all of us are taught at home, like you know um sit down squat and eat and uh, yeah chew properly you know before you swallow i these are uh, these are um, these are tips that like i said all of us uh, have got since childhood but a lot of time yeah we eat in a hurry and and they also you, uh, you know we were also told not to eat in hurry and not to go and not to step out of the house without eating anything you know on an empty stomach not to step out so i think yeah so you know with with both of you talking um, i could recollect a lot of these uh, uh, these tips that we're all taught and you know um, brought up with so it, it it just boils down to how much of it we remember and put to practice but thank you so much savita and thank you again uh, shatha it was wonderful hearing to both of you and um, yeah, great, great pieces of information there. Thanks so much. So um, as per the agenda, we are a bit overboard time, uh, but I'd still make some, um, I, I'd still not get away with the question and answer session that uh, we are open to. Uh, so this is for all the uh, participants uh, with us. And I'm sure uh, none of you uh, feel tired listening to you know this this great information that we have on foot. Um, so do we have any question or uh, anyone wants to share any feedback or talk to uh, talk to any of us or talk to the speakers, please feel free to do so. And yeah, as we open the Q and A session now, do we have any more of us turning on the camera so we see each other, or is it just three of us, Savita, Shraddha, and myself? <laughs> but of course, yeah, I was just kidding. Um, totally up to you all. But yeah, do we have questions or feedback or any comment on the topic so far? Okay, as you think, uh, perhaps uh, let's also um, take a moment uh, where I introduce all of you to the next, um, I mean, to the upcoming uh, webinar already. Um, so the upcoming webinar is on the topic Indian knowledge systems. Okay, and this is uh, scheduled um, for um, uh, this is yeah this is scheduled for second uh, January um, in the coming year. That second January 2022, um, and this is um, this session um, Indian knowledge systems is going to be uh, presented by two expert speakers. Dr. Uh, D.K. Hema Hari and Dr. D.K. Hari. Um, this is a husband-wife duo, uh, Hema and uh, Hari. And um, uh, this, uh, I mean, this husband-wife duo uh, has the background of management and IT. So they are management and IT professionals. Plus, most interestingly, they are the founders of Bharat Gyan, a civilizational study initiative to compile and present the knowledge of India its traditions, its culture, its global ties. In short, it's ethos from an Indian perspective. So this is about uh, the upcoming webinar, which is on uh, Indian knowledge systems scheduled for the second of the coming Jan. Um, meanwhile, as I say that, um, yeah, um, I also have some uh, messages coming in here. Uh, Shruti says, thank you very much for this useful info. Yeah. Uh, so Shraddha and Savita, thank you both on behalf of Shruti as well. Uh, Shakambari uh, Shakam says, it was very interesting session. As you said, these talks reinstill the value of our traditions and she thanks as well very much. Good. Um, A quick yeah. question. From my end, uh, this is Prasidya Sridhar. It was a fantastic session. Thank you to both the lovely ladies and to yourself as well, the presenter. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
uh, a quick question from my end actually was around uh, all of these fancy oils that people tell us to use, like uh, use rice bran oil or use olive oil uh, instead of like the traditional coconut oil or gingerly oil or uh, groundnut oil that we are used to using like in Indian cuisine. So what would um, uh, your take be on that? Yeah, um, so this, anyone, I mean, uh, Shraddha or Savita, um, either of you, uh, please feel free to uh, take this question. And Prasidhya, thank you so much for asking. Let's see uh, the answers that we get. Yeah, regarding oils, uh, we definitely have to stick to our local and seasonal, uh, or I can say like the state which in which you are living and from the childhood, which oil you are taking. So basically, when in India, four uh, main uh, oils are there, like groundnut oil, coconut oil, gingerly oil, and uh, the fourth one is uh, mustard oil. So from north, south, east, and west, usually people are eating, uh, used to eat that, which has overburdened by uh, all the fancy oils, as you said. So please uh, go back to your original oils and... Uh, Rice bran oil, it is not oil as I can say, because uh, it comes from the uh, rice, as you know the name, and the bran has very little amount of percentage of oil, like for example, 100 grams of rice gives you around uh, 1.5 grams of uh, oil itself. So you can imagine how much oil you're getting from rice bran. So sticking to our old traditional oils is good, Yes, in Mediterranean diet, or uh, olive oil is good. The fatty acid content like omega-3, omega-6, omega-9, all in combination, you get it from this traditional oil. So I say that you stick to the original and traditional oils only. Savita, you can please engage your camera. Thank you so much, Shadda. That was really informative. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, Savita, did you have anything to add? Um, the same thing, because since we, if we are in India, we could follow the traditional oils, the availability will be very easier. Yeah. So even yeah. after I moved to Germany, so I had the same difficulties because I used to that pattern of including that groundnut oil always. So which uh, after I moved here, I know that the olive oil could be, we can use it. And like uh, sesame oil is available in Indian shops that we could use it. So we used to have that combination of oil, which doesn't mean that we need to combine two different types of oil. Like whenever we have that salad or like uh, dips or something, we can use that sesame oil. You can season it with the sesame oil. And the olive oil can be used for other raw purposes. Extra virgin olive oil can be used. So here we have these two oil availabilities that we can make use of it. Thank you, Savita. Yeah. Wonderful. That's uh, very nice. And we also have a couple of um, more messages coming in. Kalpita writes, uh, again, yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, thanks uh, to the speaker. Uh, thanks the speakers for this wonderful session. And also wishes everyone a blessed festive season and a happy 2021. 2022, probably you wanted to mention Kalpita. <laughs> yeah, but of course we'll take the happy 2021 as well. We still have uh, 26 days to go, but yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kalpita. You also said you wanted to add another point, uh, but I don't see the um, point Kalpita. So please feel free if you still want to type in something or even ask yourself, that's also fine. Shruti um, asks uh, for suggestions. She uh, she specify. I mean, she writes many times. Healthy food prepared at home is not consumed. What to do with stale fridge food? And she asks for suggestions. Yeah, common question. I, I, yeah, very very common situation. Thanks so much for asking, Shruti. Let's see uh, what the experts have to say. Yeah. So the healthy food preparations, as we know, that based on your family's likes and dislikes we need to bring in some changes. We need to do it in an uh, innovative manner. So I see that uh, I face this uh, practical <laughs> problem that is whenever we prepare a healthy food, obviously my daughter used to that food pattern in her kindergarten or in school. So she'll expect the same way how she eats in her school. So I have to model it in some way that I present my vegetables, the inner vegetables and everything 
in the way she wants. For example, she'll have the kartoffel puffer always in the keta. So I'll give that in the form of a cutlet, what we make with the lots of vegetables and lots of sprouts in it. So use some innovative manner, understand the likes and dislikes so that it will not go stale, it will not go waste, present it in the way that they like. So understand the pulse yeah. of it. That, that's what I would say. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, that was Shruti and ah, Shratha, thank you so much that you left your contact details as well in the chat. I think that that's helpful. And um, Shruti likes your answer. She gives a thumbs up. Savita, <laughs> thank you. Good. Um, yeah, do we have any? Ah, yeah, Kalpita, yeah, that's 2022. <laughs> Uh, so happy 2022 from uh, Kalpita to everyone. Thank you again. So the other point that Kavita, uh, Kalpita wants to mention is in Assam during um, Mag Bihu, which is the Makar Sankranti, right? Like Shraddha was mentioning, it's called in different uh, names. It's called by different names. Uh, so during uh, the Mag Bihu and New Year, which is uh, uh, Rongali Bihu, the numerous sweets, desserts um, prepared are from rice flour, sesame, and traditional herbs. Most of the food items are made with less oil used and an abundant use of dairy products. That's very interesting to know. Thank you so much, Kalpita, for sharing this. That's very, very interesting to know. Thank you so much. Shraddha, um, perhaps you, uh, do you have anything to add here? Uh, do you know of yeah. this? Yes, well? yes. Yeah. Actually, we have done a photo shoot and video shoot uh, with all these uh, bihus, because there are uh, different bihus they celebrate in Assam. So in that, the um, rice preparations also, we have all the recipes collected and the photographs of it. And uh, the season, uh, in which season they have, why they have, all these details we will be uh, putting up on our web portal also and in Actus also. So it's a wonderful tradition to have the traditional food in Assam. Wow, good, good to know. This is, yeah, like you said, it's it's a very nice piece of information. Thanks for sharing, Kalpita. And uh, Vijay Lakshmi says, yeah, again, thanks um, for this uh, wonderful uh, session. Thanks you all, you both. Um, yeah, so awesome to know. Thanks a lot, says Kalpita. Thank you very much. Any other question before we uh, really come towards the vote of thanks? Any other suggestion, any other feedback anyone wants to share? Cool, cool. If not, uh, before I yeah, start off with my list of uh, uh, thanks, I would uh, like to once again, uh, you know, mention about the upcoming webinar. Like I said, it's on the Indian knowledge um, systems. Um, you know, I mean, why, we, why this topic is picked is, yeah, because India has has been uh, a continuously living and thriving civilization for for not less than um, you know ten thousand years, perhaps. So its rise, uh, progress, and survival as a, a civilization uh, was made possible due to the constant quest of its rishis and scholars of for truth and knowledge. So there's always been this seeking uh, for truth and knowledge, you know, at, in the in the uh, civilization of um, uh, India. So this vast body of knowledge that enabled uh, all the achievements, you know, um, in in the civilization of India, has you know is is accumulated over so many years, over so many years, and is also hidden in you know multiple um, multiple sources. is 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 uh, hidden uh, deep down, like you know, like the secrets of our traditional cuisine and you know the nutritional values. So this as well, the Indian knowledge systems, uh, the Indian knowledge and its its relevance uh, uh, and, and yeah, to, to the contemporary times is perhaps hidden. And that's why uh, Swasti Sri wants to kind of um, uh, unearth these, these hidden secrets and share it with the community. And this is the uh, reason we have this as the upcoming webinar, the Indian Knowledge Systems scheduled for uh, the 2nd of January with uh, Dr. D.K. Hemahari and Dr. D.K. Hari from Bharat Gyan as speakers. So um, with that then, um, we come to the last portion of 
this lovely evening. Uh, the thanks, uh, perhaps the, yeah, uh, th there's so much gratitude all over. I see so many thank you messages as well in the, um, uh, in the in the chat, Prema as well has just written. Um, thank you so much with love and gratitude. Absolutely, Prema, just like um, you mentioned, I also have uh, to thank you all for participating uh, in this webinar today. As always, lovely to see you all, to have you all uh, participate. Thanks, uh, firstly, to all the participants who joined us today. Uh, thanks so much to our expert speakers, Shraddha Marathe and Savita Manivanan. Was was such a pleasure to hearing to both of you and get all this uh, information. Uh, thanks uh, so much for um, uh, associating with Swasti Sri uh, to um, uh, Swiss Hindu Association. Thanks a lot, real honor. Thanks as well to Spicy Hof uh, for the uh, sponsorship that you offered. And uh, uh, thank you as well to my dear friend, Mrs. Um, Manati, who's been uh, the, uh, the um, yeah, backbone, um, the founder of Bhogya Online, um, which is successfully running the Swasti Shri. With that then, um, with the hope of seeing you all and um, uh, in the upcoming webinars as well, uh, please stay in touch. Um, go to the uh, websites yourself, bhogya.online, and you'll need or you'll you'll find all the required information. Feel free to get in touch um, for any further information and support as well. With that, then, thank you all so much for this lovely evening. Namaskaram.